On August 19, 1998, former vocalist of the Fugees, Miss Lauren Hill, would debut her first and only solo studio album with amazing features from Carlos Santana, Mary J. Blige, and D'Angelo. Lauren would go on to create a breathtaking fusion of hip hop, reggae, and soul, which she would then use to narrate her tales of love and loss. This album went on to be nominated for 10 Grammy Awards, and by the end of the night, singer rapper would walk away with a total of five Grammys. Album of the Year, Best R&B Album, Best New Artist, Best R&B Song, and Best Female R&B Vocal Performance. Many, many years later, Lauren would find herself topping charts again as Apple would name the Miss Education of Lauren Hill the best album of all time. So what makes this one and done so good? And what makes it bad? Let's talk about it. Let's not and then hard. you just do, and you just do the intro. Were you sitting right there? Yeah. Maniacal. That's what, how, that's literally how every, that's every, how you every, do it. I every don't do podcast. It. I, I don't do this, might get me canceled, but like that. This isn't, this what might get me canceled, but. But this is, this is the book club. Yeah. I'm your host, K Got Means, Kaya. Um, this is uh, Nate Sperlin um, at Old Milk Media, not Old Man Media. Um, and, you that's know. That's all they can say in like the five seconds that's, of this that's, being started. That's the joy of it. Um, <laughs> and we're going to go ahead. And we are going to get into. The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, which came out in 1998. 1998 in August. Wow, it's 25th. almost like you shouldn't have cut me out. It's August almost 20- like I should be there so I can it's help like I you hear co-host. A ghost. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. No, everybody hears a ghost. Okay, there we go. Yes, came out in August 20, 1998. What, August 25th? Yeah. August 25th, 1998. 1998. Yeah. Which makes that album like 20 something years old. 25 years old. And, um,. It actually was my first time listening to it when we decided to get into this the book club just to just to give a little bit of feels on what the book club is. Oh, uh, I got it. Okay, so go basically, ahead. what the book club is is it's a it's a set of esteemed individuals who are trusted by Kaya for their music listening process. You don't have to take you don't I don't need the full screen. I don't no, need, okay. I don't I don't it's steal okay. the limelight like you do. This anyway, is my show. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's our, our show. show. Ex- see exactly prove my point. Anyway, um, that being said. Um, yeah, it's, it's a collection of individuals who come together to review and talk about albums. Well, yeah, talk about albums from any time period. Um, yeah, on a, on a, trying to do it on a bi-weekly basis, you know, this is, this is all Kaya's idea and it's a great idea and that's why I wanted to be a part of it. But yeah, that's basically it. And hopefully you guys would like to watch and continue to watch. Yes. Um, you know, I believe that the same feeling that I get from reading is the same feeling I get from listening to music. And just like that imagination, that creativity, that inspiring feeling. Um, I don't know what the word is that I'm trying to get that, but that is what we're seeking for at the book club. That mental nourishment, nourishment. That mental nourishment. So, you know, um, every maybe bi-weekly, we'll pick a different album. Each person will pick a different album. And we will all listen and come together to see if we could, you know, if this album gave us that mental nourishment. And today's, yes. And today's album is The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, as mentioned before. I, I picked this album. Who better to pick than the one, not even one hit wonder, but just the one wonder. Because I, well, I would just wonder what, what one, the one hell happened. Wonder. The one album wonder. Like, I just want to know what happened. And honestly, you could kind of get some answers in yeah. that album. In the album. I agree with that. She kind of tells you. Yeah. It, it it's seems it's like, crazy. Like, um, foreshadowing. Yeah. It, well, are we getting into it now? I mean, uh, you can, go I, can for I answer it. that question? Okay. Well, yeah. um, it seems like, from from my understanding, it, it seems like, and we've seen this most recently with Cardi B, um, when a uh, artist who is a woman has a child, it seems to be looked upon as the death of their career, like the career is over, um, which is why it was so um, transformative for Cardi B to have that child and still, well, she hasn't dropped an album since, but like for her to have that child and like still be as relevant as she is in music. And it appears that Lauren Hill might have been in the same category. Well, she does say that she was in the same category and then she had her son and then she made this album. Um, but then maybe she was just like, yo, like, fuck the industry. I don't, I don't want to do this no more. Y'all gave me hell when I was just trying to be a mom and and y'all didn't let me do that. Like, I could have done both. I could have been a mom and been an artist and made you guys a lot of money. But I don't want to do that anymore because you guys couldn't respect the uh, mostly phallus uh the, the, the layers of my identity. So... I mean that's 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 just a shot in the dark, honestly. I could be completely wrong, but that's just my understanding of it. That is um I think there's so much that went into Lauren Hill going off the grid. 
Uh, and I think that is one of the things because like it just seems like there was so many things that like there was so many factors. I don't I and truly I wasn't born then. And even now, I still don't know. I wasn't there, especially because I wasn't born. But I didn't get to experience this album when it came out. I just actually went and told my aunt, I'm going to go. Like, I, I finally listened to Lauren Hill's album. She said, after like 20 years, I said, well, you didn't play it for me. So 25 years. She said, like 20 years. I'm 22. Oh. What do you want me to do? I mean, well, time travel. Mm, huh? If you know huh? how to time travel, there's a lot of things that you got to fix first. I just can't do yeah. anything. about It's going to happen either way. <laughs> Oh, and, it's a and, canon and, event. So back um, to what you were anyway, saying with Cardi B. Um, um, Cardi well, B also said, "Drop the album, drop the baby," but I never dropped the ball. And then yeah. she didn't drop an album after that. Yeah, well, some <laughs> drop people, the album, drop the baby, but I never dropped the ball. Some some people think that Cardi B is scared to release another album. Honestly, yeah. I just feel like she doesn't have to. She's making lots of singles, lots of features, and you know who did lots? that? I'm not even gonna mention her name. Yes, there's so many features, and there's so many singles. You don't listen to singles. Stop pretending like you listen to singles. That's true. There is some force, some multiple forces going on in Miss Lauren Hill's album, uh, Miss Lauren Miss Lauren Hill's head when she writes this album, and um, you know, so to just what what did you get from it? You know, what what did you when you listen to this album? What came to your mind? Like you know, as we were trying to fit, like hearing the album, you wonder, huh? What like it just makes you me wonder what's going on? What was happening? Straight up, like that was my first time. Like, who are you talking about? Like, yeah. who hurt you? What's going yeah. on? Yeah, I mean, understanding what we now know about her affair with uh, Wyclef, um, of the, when they were in the oh, Fuji's. Okay. That. Um, it seems like, she, from my understanding, or, or at least how I took it at first, it, it seemed like she was just had a whole bunch of tracks for him, or talking about him. Um, the 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 idea of um. The concept of love comes up often. The skits mm -hmm. are all based around love. Like you have, like, it seems like um, a classroom of children or young adults who are all talking about love. Um, and I, I found that to be, I found that to, to help the album. I, I do think that it's hard for me to really have, like I can, like anyone could have a valid opinion, but it's hard for me, for my opinion, to be as valid as someone who heard it like when it first came out. True. Um, because okay. like I, I listening to it, I I understand why that generation considers it a classic. Um, but can I personally call it a classic? No, because I didn't mm. live through the music the same way that they did. So I mm -hmm. just have to respect their opinion. Um, and I think that's the that's the biggest thing to remember throughout all these episodes is that we're going in different time periods and um, we might be listening to things that might be like older than us. Like in, in this case, it's older than us. Um, and we weren't alive to really experience the music. So we're going to re receive it a different way. Um, like, for example, I'm sure like, like, I'm sure Lost Ones like went off in like 1998, but like in 2024, Yo, I think it, did. it doesn't have it the same. Yeah, no, 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 it, it might have. Like, like, it might have been like the, the single. Yeah, um, we can we can actually check that if we go on Spotify. Are you going on Spotify to check it? I, I but Spotify uh, obviously... wasn't the thing that they were streaming well, it off will... though. See, that's what makes. But, me... but typically, like uh, the songs I can tell that you are the timeless, without... timeless. Yeah. Um, those are the that's... ones that would still have like a lot of plays I... on Spotify. It's even gonna be today. X Factor and Doo Wop. It'll be Doo Wop. Can't take my eyes off of you. Nothing even matters. Yeah. Lost Ones is probably like is after to Zion. I don't know, honestly, there's a lot. It's Lost Ones um, not um, is not the peak one, but I mean maybe if we went like to like um Billboard. Billboard. So while Figure you do that, that I'll tell you yeah, I'll tell you my, my piece. The album, I feel like she talks not just about loving with like another like a significant other, but there's just so much different types of relationships I feel like she talks about in the album. She talks about her love a relationship with God, her love with her children, with her child, her love with herself, her love with others. The whole theme of the album is just love. It's just such a feeling. And I feel like she conveyed it so well. Like you have so many different forms of it. You have the love lost and lost ones. And then you have the, the, the love found and to tell him. And all the skits teaching about love, teaching the younger generation about love, how to love, who to love, what is love. That is just such a beautiful, beautiful thing that they're just that this album does, and which is why I would still say it's a classic because still, I'm I'm playing it, I'm playing it, I'm play it doesn't sound like today, but the fact that it sounds like I'm gonna say yesterday, it's still like it it just it, it's like a little time traveling machine, and it's like the same because there's something to connect on, which is the feeling of love that you like it's still something to relate to. 
And I fuck with that. What you know about love, Nathan? Um. Okay, I guess I know nothing about it. Do you want to get into our into the questions that you so elegantly laid out for us? I feel like we started with overall opinion, but I think we can get to the song that st stood out the most. And okay, for me, it's Every Ghetto, Every City. Like, uh, that's the one that um, when I'm listening to this album, the first time that I've heard that song. Um, and it's a really good song. Has a, like a nice nostalgic feel to it. I feel like that's the song that um, everybody can relate to. Um, especially if you grew up like Lauren Hill, as I understand it, is from Newark. So if you grew up in like an urban Jersey. area like that, yeah. um, you can relate to these things. Some of the things that she was talking about are things that us as New Yorkers can also relate to. So I found that to be really good. Jersey's a copy of um, New really, York. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, that's true. Um, but um, yeah, I found that to be the most, the song that stood out the most. I mean, I could have, I could have said uh, doo wop that thing, but like I, I knew that song since I was playing 2K when I was yeah, like we'll say, 13. Oh my god! So, but so I guess it didn't stand out the most. But like whenever I think about this album, it's still going to be uh, that thing. Like that's 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 what I'm gonna be thinking. Can about. I can I just say every time you refer to a song because you heard it in 2K, the new generation is gonna really be like, oh yeah, I know that song from Fortnite. Like that's, nasty. that's that's their thing. That's nasty. That's their, they'll probably have the 2K thing too, but they're gonna say the things from Fortnite. But what what, yes. what is the song that stood out the most to you? Um, I love I love uh Father Forgive Him. Okay. Because I just didn't expect the the reggae the Jamaican artist. I didn't expect I didn't I didn't expect that sound. And oh my gosh, I appreciate it. She said, "Everyday people will lie. They will lie to God. So what makes you think they're not gonna lie to you?" And every time I go, Lauren, obviously, if I know that they're lying to God, but it's like, that's exactly what she's saying. If I know that they're lying to God, why, why they, Pete, you can't trust everybody. <laughs> Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. The, and the, I, like, this album, I feel like it doesn't have one sound, which is also really interesting for like a newer, well, like an older artist. Like, like it just yeah. doesn't sound like just one thing. There's yeah. so many different instruments from so many different type of like genres. Like you'll hear like the gospel sound and then you'll hear like some reggae bands and then you'll just hear like a harmonica, not a harmonica, a harp. Like, harmonica I'm like, what the hell? No, hey, if Lord I heard God, a harmonica God, on this- Got Lauren Hill playing okay. ragtime here. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. So anyway, um, what what is the song that you could have done without? You know, at first we can, we can it was say it together. Ones. Oh, I, was about to, okay. oh, I okay, thought sorry, that was yeah. what you were gonna say. No, it's not okay. my no, no, answer anymore. Oh, okay, so what's 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 your answer now? My answer now is it's it's gonna be can't take my eyes off you. I feel it could have just been a single or if this I don't even know if this was originally on the actual album, just the Spotify version. But it feels like the album was supposed to end after the miseducation of Lauren Hill. You hear the sound of like static from the music it sounds like the album's supposed to end and then i get two more songs and one's a cover dog get it out of here <laughs> so it genuinely may have not even been on the damn album it's fine i love that song i love that song but i don't want it on the on the, i want the album to end at the miseducation Lauren hill yeah yeah and i said lost i'm gonna let you go first and i'll say why it's not lost ones anymore no no actually keep going i'm, I'm looking okay. up uh to see uh, the, what the original the track list was so the, i i said lost ones before too because it was like when i first went through the album and i was to it i said lost ones because i just didn't like the you might win some but you really lost one but then it's just silly huh it, it felt so silly it felt so silly it felt so taunty and it felt so kind of annoying i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie but I listen to it again and I understand why it's that sound because it kind of interpolates the bum 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 beat em, bum bum hey what's a bum bum and it's the same thing but I still not gonna like I'll I could listen to the song now it's cool for me so but it feels long too it's very long um five minutes and 33 seconds for that one um oh, to yeah. answer uh the, the original question that was posed about track listing on Wikipedia which mm, <laughs> it does say uh it has one through 16 listed but after can't take my eyes off of you and tell him they have uh like parentheses and it says it's a hidden track which i my assumption what is that frick uh yeah my assumption from that is that the original track list was as you think as you suspected it was uh 
uh, one through fourteen, ending with the miseducation of Lauren Hill, and the last two are like bonus tracks. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and the last two are bonus not? tracks. Um, <laughs> which uh, that's that's interesting. I will. I will. The thing about this also is during the time uh, of CDs and stuff like that, there used to be like a little pamphlet that came along with things. I'm. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we can find like a copy of that pamphlet just like on the internet um yep i already heard you 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 already going for that so while you're doing that let me address the song that i could have done without and that's also lost ones um it's just a weird way to start the album honestly like that that the yeah like the beat doesn't really compared to the rest of the beats on the album i feel like that one is the one that's the most um that, that one's the the biggest outlier in terms of all the beats i don't like the tempo of it um i don't like the flow i I just i just don't like the song honestly i I just really could have done without it it's just there's nothing really about it i guess besides the message i do like the message of it um but besides that there isn't really a redeeming quality of that song not saying it's trash or garbage it's just something that um i would probably just like fold up in a napkin and um (laughs) gently (laughs) placing gently gently place uh where it's supposed to be let me also say that i skip x factor I yeah. skip X Factor. Why do you skip X Factor? Oh, don't boo me! Don't yeah, boo like, me! Yeah, uh, like a whole generation of music listeners are booing like, you right now. Listen, don't boo me. Boo the light skinned man that Kendrick doesn't like. The reason why I skip X Factor is because it is just. Listen, I didn't hear the album before. Please forgive me. Don't just crucify me that my parents didn't make me before the 2000s, okay? And crucify. Crucify them for not listening to the album and not playing the album around me. I don't know. In the, in the words of Lauren Hill, forgive her father for forgive. she knows knows she knows not. What I know she's not done. what I do. I yeah. know not what I did. I don't know. Okay. And the problem is because every time I hear "Nice for What," Lauren Hill's sample comes on, and then when I hear "X Factor," I only think about "Nice for What." And then when I oh, sing like "X Drake. Factor." And then when I sing X Factor, I only think of care for me, care for me. Thought you'd be there for me, there for me, there for me. Won't you be carefully, carefully, carefully? And that part doesn't even come up till very long into the song. So yes. And now talk about the album and the track listing that we were talking about. Feeling like that it was too extra. It is in fact one through fourteen. Yes. And you get all exactly exactly what I said it was. That's exactly how it worked out. This is a nice little like the back of the cover. Yeah, we don't that, get to see the little... back of the cover. No, on Spotify. Th- those those don't exist anymore. Period. Yeah. No. Um, is that um, is that a little biography of her on the it bottom? Says, what is it what says, is that on the bottom? Or is that just credits? Written, oh, okay. Produced, written, arranged. Yeah. So we could go straight into the question about cover art. Opinion on the cover art, because uh, like on Spotify, you don't get to see the back of albums. I forget albums have backs, <laughs> unless it's on Instagram posts. So this is also nice to see. I like this cover. I like that I believe it's the first the first track where they have the skit with the teacher taking attendance and he has to call um, Lauren Hill's name three times because she hasn't responded to him to say present or whatever. So with that context, I, I like to think that she wasn't responding to him because she was like just like carving in this design into her desk. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty cool. But like what the like that aside, like the the pencil on the top here, like um in the little indent of the desk is really nice. Having it look like a desk in the first place, it really um gives the vibe of like it really helps uh further the atmosphere of the album of it being in the classroom and people um learning about uh love or talking about love, sharing their opinions on love. Um so yeah, I I like it a lot. Not to cut oh, you no, off. Because I think I think we can I think we can bring two of these questions in at the same time. Um and as for the opinion on the title as well, yes. um I think I think it's a really good title. If you're like especially with the theme of the album, with the atmosphere of the album, it's perfect for this. And also Lauren Hill talks a lot about her missteps in love. So that's where the miseducation um concept comes into play as well. So I think it's packaged really, really beautifully. Yes. Um. Do you know where the title comes from? I do not. So the al- the title of the album comes from two places. Um, it's a book um called the Miseducation of of the Negro. Another book, I think. Oh, I the Education of Sonny Carson. 
Well, not that one. Definitely. Maybe Miss Education or Negro. Sounds familiar. Yes. I might have read and it. And I believe she said it was called, like, she titled it that because, like, it was the re-education of, Lauren, of, of her, basically. Mm-hmm. Something like, something along those lines. I, you know, I'm just quoting years of interviews. Yeah, or I mean, it's been 25 years. There better be years and of what interviews. Can, what could you do? What could you do? Yeah, I mean, just surviving, eating off of one album for several years. That's a talent Two in decades. itself. Her kids are fine, perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah, that, that's Her, that's one thing we gotta talk about. I'm, listen, let's move on to the next anyway. question. <laughs> so how does the album impact the view of the artist of Lauren Hill? Listen, like I just said, how it's only one album, I have no choice but to judge her off of just this album. Technically, there's two. Technically, there's two, but no one acknowledges the second one for very good reason. Oh, it's this... because it does. It hasn't come out yet. Oh no, no, no there's. <laughs> There's actually she's, a second she's one. It. She's teasing a second one for real. There's kind of a second one. It's a project of just live music, though. I, it's I, just, I don't. It's, I'm not a fan of those albums. It's just like stripped down live. Some like her. It's a, I think it's of her MTV performances. And oh, there's a lot of Lauren I've Hill fans that, okay. who really don't fuck with it, anyways. No. So, I mean, because it yeah. wasn't. A, it's not a studio album, literally. Yeah, it's not. It's it's a it's a concert album. Um, yeah. But. Uh, I, it doesn't really impact my view of Lauren Hill at all, because for the reason that you mentioned, it's only one album. She only has one album in her discography. I feel like the album made me ask more questions about her and understand like where she came from and what like, like it just made me really wonder what was going on. Like I really wanted to know what was going on. Like she like she started this. She this is this is her project after the Fugees. Like it makes me ask more questions about her, basically. Which makes me want to listen to more music from her, but as we know, there's nothing she, there. She hasn't released. There's nothing there. Yeah. Hey, but look, <laughs> them fans better come to the show and know the words. <laughs> I oh, mean, they're gonna be at the show, but well, they're gonna be they go perform it when they she's when not they be there. Uh, yeah, I was about to say when they go, yeah. they have a plenty of time to familiarize yeah. themselves with the words because she's true. gonna show up like three hours late. She'll be late. Um, yeah, very late. Um, <laughs> just like us listening to this album anyway. Hey. Um, so don't be hey, mad at me, hey, Lauren. Hey. <laughs> um. What, what did you think about the beat selection and the track listing? I actually really liked them. I even liked the beat on the lost ones. The Her selecting beats that not only she can sing on, but beats that she can also rap on. And it, the switch between them, like her voice on both singing and rapping is just, it's like, it's, it's hard. It's hard to have both that sound so good and so well together. It, that just mesh. It doesn't sound too forced. Nothing sounds too, because you know, you got a lot of, that's, what, that's where you end up with like, melodic rappers where you have that just uh, and we know who you know you know who i'm talking about but just the fact the fact that she can straight up just sing and belt and then get into flowing and just bar for bar for bar that's talent man and the picking beats for that exact um reason i like just just the selection like production they they really made that shit for this reason and i like them i like them it works so well yeah um i like all the beat selection except for lost ones honestly um i before we recorded this i was playing mlb the show and um it's a game about rhythm and when i heard lost ones beat immediately disrupted my rhythm Terrible. it's a game about, it's a game about rhythm um, yes it is because then you hit a flow you, you get a nice flow and then you start hitting home runs everywhere i was about to say is it a music game no i oh. mean it's, it's, well uh, baseball is a rhythm sport you know you throw someone off their rhythm and it's not going to be the same um but anyway um, besides that, besides Lost Ones being the intro, like the first song, actual song on there, um, I like the track listing. I think it's cohesive. I think the beats are cohesive too, except for Lost Ones. Honestly, if you take Lost Ones out, I don't really have a problem with uh, the track listing or the beat selection. I'm not saying that Lost Ones is trash. It's just it's twenty listening to it with twenty twenty four years. It just it doesn't it doesn't vibe with me. Come on, you might win some, but you really lost one. You come on. No, I'm good. I'm going to listen to Rhapsody twice after this now. You say that as if it's to clean your ears. Lost ones, yeah, definitely. Also, I feel like we did, we skipped, like, uh, along with the track listing, the acknowledgement of her features. Carlos Santana onto Zion. Yep. Also, also featured on this is Mary J. Blige, D'Angelo. Oh, it's only three features. She sang her. No, no, no. That's what it says on Spotify. There's no, there's no, um, credit for Forgive Them, Father, Forgive Them, Father. Is there, is there supposed to be? 
Yes, there's a person on there. There's another person on that song. Look, she's. Yeah, it's I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's 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 Shelly Shelly Thunder. Anyways, what was your next thing that you wanted to say? I think we're I think we're done. I, well, I, so as far as the questions go. Oh, did you have your favorite line for the project? Um, that thing, that thing, that thing. Do you think that the artist got their message across with this project? One thousand percent. Yes. I yeah. think I think she did get her message across. I don't think I don't think the message was cloudy. Or, I don't think no. it was confusing. I think it was precise. Yeah. And it's also through, also nice to listen to music that actually has a message. And and not even to shit on music with no message. It genuinely is just nice to have music with a message. Uh, like also like this is clearly a project that someone cared about when they made it. Like, yeah. There's a lot of care. There's a lot of feelings, there's a lot of emotions in this project. And I just appreciate it twenty five years later. <laughs> Um, you want to say 24 again? Shit. Uh, to close off, I guess, I, no, I mean, well, I should have said that first, and then I should have said what I'm about to say first, and then that. But uh, your favorite skit? Do you have a favorite skit? That's a good question. Honestly, probably probably the first one, the intro, because the intro. of my, my, um, my hypothesis about her not answering the teacher because she's carving the design into the desk. You know, I, I like that idea. My idea was that she was sleeping and that all this is made up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And she's not even in the class. That might be that might be a little too meta. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. Might be a little too meta. Yes, intentionally. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um. How do you feel about uh one of the skits that was like 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 the teacher? He's asking like we we fellows we don't fall in love right? Da -da -da -da, like just messing around with them. How do you feel about that? I mean that during that time it's like you know it's like to to, to ask these men. To truly give themselves to like like the vulnerability of the class and say, I know about love. Like, how, yeah, what do you think about that? Men have feelings too. Men have feelings too, man. And I just think, I just love the idea of picking these young brains of their point of view of this is what love is. Because that's where it starts. It starts young. You like you understand understanding like how to love, who to love, how much to love, all this stuff. It's like it starts young and just asking these questions to these kids. It's like. What do you think this is? How, is it, like, how do you feel about that? It really sets the vibe of like the education of it all. The miseducation. Which is where she went wrong. Mm. But now she's, she's setting this. Thickens. Exactly. She's planting the seed for the younger people to be educated about love. Girls, you better watch out. Guys, you better watch out. Because Lauren Hill is not dropping another album. It's been 25 years later. Don't be fooled, especially by that random tweet that's going around. I'm not saying well, that she I, is. I don't even want another album. Oh, yeah, like I'm fine. That lady's retired. She's older than she's. She's honestly only like 11 years older than Drake. But either way, time to go. Really? She is. She's like 40 something. Huh. Better be like the most mature raps of all time. <laughs> yeah, I used to. I used to rap about raps way back before rapping was rapping. Then I made a movie and I started sister acting. She was, she was in the sister act too. Oh, the sister act too. All right. First, before the Lauren movie, Lauren Hill Ghostwriter discovered. Or a little bit after. You better watch movie. out. She's not gonna credit you. Forgive her father. Peace. I think that's a. I think that's a good way to end it. Yes. All right. Thank you for thank you for watching and listening to the first episode of the book club. Uh, let us know what you think. And, and, hello. You're not the only one who knows how to host here. And now you're going to make me the smallest. That's that's crazy. Anyway, thank you for... I, I, Wait, no, no. I want to figure out how to do it right. As, as, as you can see, it's her, it's her first day. She's new. Um. Anyway. There we go. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, see. She's... she's oh, there. okay. I'm Alrighty, thank you for watching the first episode, or or not the first episode, but the pilot episode of the book club. Let us know what you think if you plan on listening to the Miseducation of Lauren Hill, or if you heard it already. Uh, let you let us know what you think about the album in the comments below. Uh, let us also know what you would like to hear us talk about next. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, follow the channel. We're out.